I think we've all had a time where we didn't live up to being the good Christian we want to be. You see, we're sinners. And the problem with being sinners is that we sin and we do things that we're not proud of. And when we give in to temptation, we're left with the weight of our shame and guilt. And I'll tell you, shame and guilt is something we must learn how to handle well because we're imperfect people. So when the time comes and you are filled with shame and guilt, follow these three steps. Step number one, confess your sin. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Understand that when you sin, it hurts you. It hurts your conscience, your confidence, and your closeness with God. So if you have any shame or guilt because of a sin that you committed, you must obey scripture here and confess your sin. And confession is a two-step process. First, confess to God, and then confess to a close Christian friend. When you confess to God, pray out loud and be specific with your sin. And for those of you who don't have a friend to confide in, find someone that has an ambition like you to be a strong Christian and then invest in that friendship. Spend time with them, see if they truly care about you, and then look for an opportunity for you to confess your struggle and for them to pray for you. Just remember that confession is a source of healing and mercy. So the sooner you confess, the sooner your heart can have rest. Step number two, own your sin. Isaiah chapter 64, verse six. We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins sweep us away like the wind. So after you confess your sin, it's healthy to remember who we are. And the reality is that right now, we're sinners. We're imperfect, impure, and are prone to sin. Sin is what we do. But your identity does not end there. I mean, yes, we're sinners, but we're also works in progress. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And I'm certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. You see, we're sinners. So when we're filled with guilt and shame, we need to look away from our failure and look to Jesus who desires to continue our progress. Owning our sin needs to be done because it puts us in a place of humility. So when we're faced with guilt and shame and thoughts that say, why aren't I a better Christian? And why can't I get this right? Counter those thoughts with these truths. We're sinners and sin is what we do, unfortunately. But that's why Jesus died, to pay our penalty. And despite our sin, it's Jesus's will to love us and to continue his work in us. So if you won't give up, neither should we. Step number three, forget your sin. Psalm 103 verses eight to 14. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve for his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him, for he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Please remember that when Jesus died for our sin, he died for all our sin, past, present, and future. So once we confess our sin, and after we own the fact that we're sinners and works in progress, don't bring up your sin anymore. Let go of your guilt and shame. Seriously, when you refuse to let go of your guilt and shame, you minimize the power of the cross, Jesus' death and sacrifice. Jesus' blood was enough. The consequences of our sin were placed on Jesus when he died. So when you place your faith in his sacrifice for you, he forgives you of all your sin. 
So when you sin, after you confess to God and to godly friends, let it go and own the fact that Jesus paid the full price of your sin. You don't need to carry any more guilt or any more shame because Jesus bore all that guilt and shame on the cross. Rest in the truth of Jesus' love and sacrifice for you, and may God's kindness lead you to repentance. All right, so again, if you're someone that's weighed down with guilt and shame, don't freak out. It's normal because we all mess up. So when it happens, remember these three steps. Confess your sin to God and to a friend that has your best interest in mind. Own your sin. Remember that we're all sinners. It's what we do. And at the same time, we're God's works in progress. And forget your sin. Jesus died once and for all. So if he's forgiven us and chooses not to bring up our failures, then we should rest in God's forgiveness. So we hope this helps and never forget Jesus loves you.